Hi there, if you're new to my channel, my name is Stacey Kinyanjuri and welcome to my channel. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a book review and the book I'll be reviewing is Tales from the Cafe by Toshikazi Kawaguchi. Tales from the Cafe is a sequel to Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazi Kawaguchi. Similar to its predecessor, this book explores what someone would do if they had one chance to go back to the past or to the future and they could talk to a loved one. Again, similar to the first book, this book is set in Tokyo, Japan, where there's a cafe called Foniculi Fonicula. It's a cafe located at the basement of a building and to any ordinary person, it can seem like every other cafe, but with a vintage aesthetic. But contrary to what meets the eye, this cafe has the power to give people a once in a lifetime opportunity to bend the laws of time. I really, really, really liked the first book and I just fell in love with this one. Consistent to his writing, Toshikazi Kawaguchi seems to effortlessly capture beautiful human stories in the most simplest and touching ways. Even though the premise sounds so fictional with the whole being able to travel back in time, the stories are something you can easily imagine happening in real life or maybe they've actually happened to somebody in real life. And the character's journey with dealing with how their lives are unfolding is so captivating. I couldn't put this book down. This book was originally written in Japanese, then it was translated to English by Geoffrey. It was published in 2017, which was a pleasant surprise because I'm learning about it in 2022. So it's always nice to see a book that can stand the test of time. Just like its predecessor, this book is a quick read with only 192 pages. So you can easily get through it in a day or two. The genre is magical realism. I would say there's great use of magical realism in this book. By definition, magical realism is a style of literary fiction and art which paints a realistic view of the world while adding magical elements often blurring the lines between fantasy and reality i'm about to give you spoilers but only summaries of the stories in the book nonetheless if you're a person who doesn't like any kind of spoilers check the chapters section in this video to skip this part there are four stories in this book and the stories are the man who goes back in time to see his best friend who died 20 years ago and left his daughter orphaned the son who was unable to attend his own mother's funeral because he didn't have enough transport money. The man who traveled to the future to see the girl he couldn't marry because in the present he just got diagnosed with a terminal illness. And lastly, the old detective who never gave his wife that gift. Do you have to read the first book in order to follow the stories shared in this book? The answer is no, but personally I think reading the first book then this one makes for a better read because I found that I now knew the characters better, I knew the names better and seeing as I'm somebody who has no interaction with Japanese culture, it just made the story flow much better because I had read the first one. This book isn't a continuation of the first one, but we do have some characters that are similar in both books. For example, the owner of the cafe, the workers in the cafe. But other than that, the stories introduced in this book are completely new. I think my remarks throughout this video show just how much I loved reading this book, but if I was to give one criticism, it could be the constant repetitive description of the settings. For example, the first book describes the main setting, which is the cafe, in detail, which gives you, the reader, a great picture of where the stories are taking place. But the annoying thing is, the second book also takes its time to describe the same settings. The same goes with the description of some of the characters. For someone who's read the first book, I found this to be really annoying but for somebody who chooses to start with this book then I guess it's really a good thing because it helps you picture the settings and understand the characters better. Despite that tiny detail this book is something that I truly enjoyed reading and I think even if I choose to read the first one again I'll enjoy it much more. And that's it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.